All right, guys, so in this lesson, I'm going to be covering margin of safety and how to gauge your investment and make sure that whether or not you're jumping into an investment and understanding your margin of safety or your risk involved, okay? A lot of people get into investing or trading, and a lot of you guys I know are still guilty of it. You've been coming to me with your questions and saying, hey, Chris, I've, I've, got, I've been doing penny stocks. Well, guess what? That's the number one thing that I want to change is getting you into that investor mindset rather than the penny stock um, trader mindset. There's a lot of aspects that you need to know. Um, I could go into it in full detail, the bad things about stock trading um, and why you should get into more investing. And hopefully I'm going to start changing that mindset because with these videos, I'm breaking them down in such a way to first get you to understand the financial portion. Um, that's the main understanding or something that you really need to know about what goes on behind the scenes inside of a company before you even get into investing because you need to know whether or not the company is actually financial sta uh, financially stable and, and strong or if it's weak or if you're overpaying um, on its value, because w that's the thing. When you get into trading those, um, the stocks, you're just basically trading numbers. You're, you're literally seeing $5 stocks and you think, oh, I only have 500 bucks, so I can buy 100 shares of that. Well, guess what? Um, typically what happens is when you get into that stock, you got into it when it's over or yeah, overvalued and it just goes the opposite direction and you start to lose money because you don't understand finances, you don't understand the actual stock market it, it, itself and how it works. So hopefully these lessons are starting to sink in and I'm starting to teach you something. So let, let's get onto my screen here. Now I'm gonna show you margin of safety, one shares, one company, remember that. And it, I'm, I'm gonna break it down, uh, one company is one share. And I'm also gonna show you some terminology that you need to know um, such as net income, and I said this in the previous video, net income is earnings. Well, now we're gonna learn that equity is book value when it comes to one share. So in business and finance, equity is you know the difference between assets and liabilities or what you owe on your house um, compared to what its value is. So now we're gonna look at that into a stock market perspective and also see the margin of safety and how to gauge that with the price that's being asked for that property or that share or that company, the market price compared to the equity involved in its finances. So we understood, we understand that in the last section, we had Ted up here that was a nice coffee shop owner. He was all smiles and giggly um, because he was making money. He was making, uh, what, what did I say, $100,000 a year by literally just owning a company um, and, and nothing was happening to that. So let's assume that if, if nothing was to happen in a company and we see that net income or the earnings, let's, let's sh show you what happens um, when it comes to, to those values. So we had Ted here. He's the business owner of Ted's Coffee Shop. I'm not going to get fancy with my drawings, guys. This is just a mouse. And this is the customers coming in with Ted, making him bank. And there was three aspects. Remember I showed you just for, for visual purposes was the land involved, the rent, and then you have your cost of product. And there's a little coffee cup and here's the employee, right? So everything that was paid out in taxes over here, once those were paid, Ted's net income was a hundred thousand a year. Okay, so theoretically, everything that happens in this picture with business is actually the income statement. And these three documents is what you really need to know when you, when you get into investing and, and actually business is the income statement. And I'm just going to show you that this... Net income or earnings, also share basis, and up here is on a company level basis. All right, so those two things is what you really, really, really need to understand. Net income it is on a company level and earnings is on a share basis. So anytime a company is to report their earnings quarterly, that earnings per share is what the money that, that this overall picture is like. You're earning per share. Okay, so if it's $2, you know that for every share you're earning $2. Or for every 
that one company or that one share is earning two dollars net income that's everything paid off taxes and all that so the next other document that you need to know is the balance sheet and this is where margin of safety uh, you can calculate that you can you can uh, or equity so this is the balance sheet and on these terms equity is at a company level and it is called the book value when it comes to share basis so book value and equity and that is find on the back or that is calculated with the balance uh, balance sheet okay and then you have and I'm not going to get into this one this is a, a more detailed what happens from the balance sheet and income statements this is what the cash flow statement shows is more details like stock equity, um, what what they're doing with their dividends and where they're going, uh, where, where their money's going into specifically, and all of that. But that's a whole nother lesson. I just want to cover the income statement and balance sheet with you, but I will show you obviously that there is the third one, and that's the cash flow statement. So we have three these three documents. And this down here, as I said, just to remind you, what happens within the company, the customer comes in, it flows in through Ted's coffee shop, they pay Ted. Um, in return, Ted has to manage the employees, the, the supplies and the, and the land and all that and taxes. And then that's broken down with your income statement right here. Okay, so when you wanna jump into an investment, let's say Ted was, was asking $1 million for that company. Your, your main mission is to find out what it's really worth or what you're willing to spend. Anybody's perspective within the market, and that's where the market gets very complex when you have all these price actions going on, um, you know, $16.50, and then the next second it's $16.54, uh, so on and so on, because all these speculators or all these, these traders are, are manipulating the market and its movement or, or that stock movement, and they don't really know what's going on. So you have all these seconds going on in the day that or all these prices within seconds just interacting and, in, and, and interchanging with each other, and they, they're, they're just trading off price action. So that's why what that ha uh, how that happens and why you see that. Now, for the big institutions or big investors, billionaires, you'll see large blocks come in, and they're, they're building their foundation and they're just waiting for years later on down the road to um, sell, their, sell their shares. So they're making money um, off, off those who speculate the price and, and drive prices down and up. So when you get into a stock, you wanna know what's, what is its margin of uh, safety or it's, it's, you wanna calculate by that or use the, the calculation for equity. So when you determine equity, you literally minus or take in assets minus liabilities equals equity and that sounds easy okay but here's something I want to show you real quick and this is what okay so you have assets and this is what it will look like on a balance sheet well, let me All right, so you have the assets. Then above or underneath you have cash on hand, cash equivalents. You have per se the coffee shop, which will be like the, the building itself. Coffee machine, supplies or goods. And land, property, etc. And then underneath assets, which there's not enough room. Uh, actually, let me see if I uh, just for you will have liabilities, and these are long-term, short-term. 
They're, they're more detailed, but for this sole purpose in this lesson, I'm just going to show you the basics when it comes to Ted's Coffee Shop. So we have the liabilities underneath here. And I'm actually going to put Coffee Shop twice. You'll see it in the assets. You also see the coffee machine in the liabilities, uh, supplies. Actually, not some. Well, you you could have supplies, but um, let's just do land. I could do supplies technically. Uh, so over here we have cash on hand. Let's just say that Ted has ten thousand cash on hand. Coffee shop. This is what it's worth in its value. So let's say the coffee shop is worth. Uh, 40,000 coffee machinery. Let's say it's, it's valued at 20,000 supplies, 10,000 land. It's 50,000. All right. So we add these up, go back to my little line. Hundred and thirty. So we have one hundred thirty thousand dollars in assets. Now you see this twice is because what you actually owe. Here's the value of the coffee shop. Here's the value of the coffee machine. But down here you still might owe on that. So you have to put that as a liability. So if you you still owe. Um, all right. So if you still owe. Let's do have. 20,000 coffee machine. Let's do 10,000. And land, you still owe on that. Let's do 25,000. You have a total of 55,000 in liabilities. So we will deduct 55,000 from 130. We'll come up with 75,000 in equity. So if everything was to happen or go wrong with Ted's coffee shop, he could liquidate all this or not really liquidate it, but, but use the assets to pay off the liabilities. And what he has left is, $75,000. Okay. So $75,000 is pretty close to the $100,000. So you would compare that and you would understand that in total equity, he actually, it's, it's probably a safe investment, especially if you're making, or no, I'm sorry, let me back up for a second. If Ted was asking $1 million and you know that you're making $100,000 every single year, $75,000 and 1 million, that is up to you to understand it, whether or not it's worth it or not. Because if you was to close down shop today, you would theoretically only get $75,000. So um, I, I apologize for that. I was looking at the $100,000 net income. You don't look at net income. You can, because you know that if you pay a million, you're going to make a hundred thousand dollars every year. And in 10 years, obviously it pay for itself. If nothing goes wrong. But if it does, what happens? This is what you'll get the 75,000. Okay, so you have to understand that $75,000 in equity, you know, that's the margin of safety. And that's where Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, all these investors are looking at finances and the financial strengths of these companies. And that's where you will be distinguished between an investor and a trader because traders look at nothing when it comes to the financial section. So that's found on the balance sheet. Okay, so if we was to look at the $75,000, and, and to break that down in share wise, it would be a, let's say 0.7 to a $100 um, margin. And that is your book value. So that's how that works when it comes to stocks and, and, and companies. Think of this whole Ted's coffee shop. 
right here as this. And just for, it's broken down in multiple sections. But putting Ted behind bars here and each of these blocks is one share. So no matter what happens to a company, one share is one business. So when you buy into a share, it doesn't matter if you buy one share, $100,000, 100,000 shares, the percentage is always the same. And so what happens within the company affects that same shareholder. It doesn't matter if this shareholder has this many, many, uh, many shares or, or one share, everything happens the same. The only difference is what you buy this, the, the share at compared to the next person. That's where your percentage margins come into play and how much rate of returns you, you make is based off how low you bought the stock and how well you, or how high you can sell that stock off. Stock off. So I hope this helps. Um, that's pretty much understanding equity and your balance sheets. And, under, and basically taking into effect assets minus liabilities equal that. Now, now there are um, six other things that I wanna cover real quick is when I look into stocks, these are the six things that I look at and I, I, I put together because I know that I can formulate any kind of calculation by these numbers and these are the six things that are important. So up here, they are the share price, Shares outstanding. And what shares outstanding means is the total number of shares that the company has divided itself up itself up into to sell to the public or investors. Market cap is theoretically or market value is the overall value of the company and how you determine that. Um, just remember market cap is the same as market value. Cash, debt, and enterprise value. Now enterprise value is a little bit different than book value because book value is just equity, right? Enterprise value is literally taking the cash minus debt and, and, and or market cap minus debt plus cash, okay, that determines the actual value of the company because the, the overall company is literally just the shares or the share price times shares outstanding and that will give you the market cap. But to really break it down on what's owed and whatnot, that's, you'll, you'll deduct the, or you'll add the cash because the cash literally, you're using the cash to pay off the debt. So you wanna break that, you wanna uh, slim that debt down a little bit. So that's why it's market cap plus debt minus cash. And then enterprise value is what I just said, the market cap, um, well, minus cash, sorry. You'll, you'll deduct the cash from the overall value because that will be less that you have to pay plus the debt again. Okay, so let's look for an example. I am going to show you an example of one company and this is Apple. And there's, there's multiple forms that when you go to sec.gov or your, whichever site you want to use, I use sec.gov -E to find the filings of these companies. And they are the 10Q and the 10K. The 10K is the annual. That will ha also have your last quarter for that year um, and, and the combination of the entire year. And your 10Qs are quarterly reports. So we went to the 10Q or 10, 10K. And right here, in this first scroll down a little bit for Apple and you see 4,745,300 or actually 4,745,398,000 shares of common stock. So 475,398 and that would actually go on the screen All right, so I've lost my screen here. All right, so anyways, you would take the, that total of shares 
times the share price today, and that would give you the market cap. And then you'll go into this document, which is the 10Q, 10K. All right, and right here, um, it usually says financial statements or supplementary um, data. You'll, you'll click that and it will bring you down to the section that you need to start looking at. And we'll scroll down and we'll look for um, consolidated balance sheets because that's what we're looking at in this. And we'll look at cash and cash equivalents, marketable securities, accounts receivable. Um, you don't really count those. You don't count inventories, vendor non-trade re, uh, receivables. Those are um, like employee wages, loans and tax refunds that are owed um, or so you count those as in the, as the assets and you have to understand that current assets or anything within a year and long term um, is anything a year year from now so anything before a year is is, is short term or current and then in non uh, total non current or long term is anything after a year so th the only cash that I count is cash and cash equivalences, uh, equivalents, um, marketable securities, because those are things that can be turned into cash pretty quick. Um, and I also do the non-current assets. Those are long-term, but those can still be uh, turned into uh, cash. And then down here in liabilities, liabilities, remember, we have to take the liabilities and subtract that um, to, to gain a better understanding on our equity of what will really, what our company's really worth if it was to close down tomorrow. So you would take in uh, commercial paper, which is uh, things like uh, short term promissory notes that are used to pay off short term debt. You would also use um, current portion of long-term debt and long-term debt. Okay. So long, because those are debts and liabilities that, that are obviously owed. So long-term um, commercial paper and down here term debt. So you would add all those up and subtract from the, the, the market cap or the enterprise. And that will give you the enterprise value. So you have to understand that there are, this, all this is involved when it comes to investing and that's how complex things get. And this is literally just the finances of a company to determine whether or not you should get into a company um, or even look at it. The next thing is engaging its PE ratio and price to earnings. So for uh, remember you would take its, its market price and its earnings per share and divide that. And that's, that would tell you, you know, per se $5 for every $1 spent. I'll make that in a year. Um, you want to look for things anywhere from 15 to five, anything over 15, you're, you're, you're looking at why pay, you know, I'm not going to want to spend $20 to make $1 and I can go for another company that I can spend and, and make, you know, a 15 to one ratio. So you have to understand that there's, there's multiple things to look at before you even get into a company. And those are used to gauge, you know, to formulate your, your mentality of thinking, okay, now it's time to get into the stock and win. That's the next you know, thing that I'll be teaching. So I hope this kind of helped or tremendously. And if you're out there trading, you know, just remember that you're, you're probably the 10% or 90% or lose. And if you are pretty good at it, stick to it. If it's a strategy that works fine, but if you're going to soon realize you're probably going to lose and you should start looking into finances and financial strengths of companies and it gets pretty exciting to looking, looking into companies like this, like Apple, Amazon, Coca-Cola, and, and seeing what they're truly doing. Now, when you look at these, I do want to stress, when you look at financial statements and, and, and balance sheets, you only see um, like the $25 billion and $913 million here. And that's because everything is in um, millions except number of shares. Okay, so every, like I just wanted to clarify everything is in millions. So you would just add six zeros before that. And that's the, that's to clean up the, the balance sheet here. You don't want a bunch of zeros and everything just 
uh, confusing it. So they round up to the, the next mil, uh, yes, millionth. They don't take in the consideration of that. So I hope that helped. Just remember when you're looking at these six zeros, add six zeros to it, and that's how you do that. So I hope this helped. If there's anything that I can help, uh, answer, feel free to drop them in the comments, subscribe to my YouTube, look me up on, on investingwithchris.com, and I'll see you in the next video lesson.